and was frustrating because we were really, you know, being the first game of the series, they had just, you know, schedule issues all the time. They were building the technology for this game. And it, you know, things kept getting pushed and pushed, and by the time we were done, it was difficult to implement and integrate the music really properly. So um, it was pretty well done, but I thought that, you know, it could have been better. When it came to Mass Effect 2, I just said, look, I really think that I should be the lead composer so that everything's coming through one group of people and then we can just give you everything at the same time. I'll hire somebody uh, to, to work with me, hand in glove, and we'll integrate it all and then hand you finished levels. And it'll be my intention because half the time I write this stuff and I give it to him and I, play, I see it played in the game and it's like, that's not what I wrote that piece for. You know, they'll just cut it up and put it anywhere. So um, that kind of had its own bunch of problems, you know, because we were, it, it took us a long time to do that. Plus I was working with a team of guys, so I had to get assets from everybody and then put them in and then test it. And it was like, it was like two jobs. It was like an enormous amount of work beyond just composing the score. It gave me a huge appreciation for what the audio people at the developer have to go through. Mass Effect 2 was all supposed to be smaller, you know, in, not in scope in terms of how large the universe was, but in terms of the story. So we were getting to know individual characters. Casey Hudson wanted to move towards a more cinematic approach, and I think that kind of involved more orchestral works compared to synth. There was still synth material involved, but it was more weighted towards orchestral, for sure. It was supposed to be, I think, more, uh, as you say, heroic, yes, but more personal and less general. What I did was I looked at the design of the game. If you had to simplify it down to boil it way down, you're going on eight different missions to collect people. Then you have to create, uh, do a, another mission with them to, to make them loyal to you. So there was all these great opportunities to, to work with other composers on these acquisition levels where you're going out to get this character or this character. And the cool thing about that for the other composers was that I was able to say to them, it's your level, go with it. David, you, uh, you take care of Morden, and then Jimmy, you take care of Samara, and then Sam, you take care of Legion. And it was just like, and they had their whole level to sink their teeth into. Getting into the whole gaming industry was something that was a, you know, a fascinating experience for me because I have my background in television and film. Uh, as a composer, uh, I, I did cartoons for Disney, I did uh, feature trailers for Universal, and uh, children's television for HBO. Jack you know, was getting involved in the game industry earlier on, and I had said to him, no, 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 I'm really, really not interested at all in getting into the, to this industry. So, you know, slowly but surely, the, the, the product that was being developed and, and the creativity that was going on was remarkable, and, and the, the projects that we were getting in television were actually, at the time, were, were slimming down, and they were not as interesting. This was really going to be a team approach because there was going to be so much. I mean, it, it turned out, I, th I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of 100 and 180 minutes of music, over 700 assets. So, uh, you know, when he, when he gave me, you know, Garrus, I was like, oh, God, how, you know, what an honor. I mean, what a, what a great character to, you know, to develop. I intentionally wanted to bring to Garrus a human 
element almost, a sense of emotion to him that he's motivated by something greater than just battle. He, he's so tormented by his nature to do war and his overall desire for healing and for justice. So I had an opportunity when I was creating the, the, the thematic ideas for Garris to try to create that conflict in him. I tried to bring in some of the elements of Tron. I know on Garris's level, the way that I structured my chord vocabulary was very similar to Wendy Carlos's language in Tron. I wanted to kind of t try to tie those elements, but just as uh, just as a little bit of a you know a flavor to it. When Morden popped into into the picture. Uh, it was clear that that Morden was going to be, on, on some level, you know, a little bit of the comic relief element uh, in, in the game. Uh, he definitely has, you know, that that quality of, of being you know, quirky, uh, a little little bit uh, disorganized, uh, definitely uh, cerebral overthinking. For a doctor, you're awfully calm about taking out a group of mercs. Wasn't always a doctor. Some work with Solarian Special Tasks Group. Can handle myself. Advantage of being Solarian. Turians, Krogan, Vorcha, all obvious threats. Never see me coming. So, uh, Morden really was, was one of the most fascinating uh, levels to do, and it's it's really one of the more electronic levels. We used I, uh, Arturia uh, Analog Factory a lot in that one. So there were a lot of Moog uh, elements in there. There were lots of CS80 sounds, uh, lots of uh, early retro synthesizer qualities with the modulation wheel, you know, kind of half up so that there was a lot of you know, tremolos and things like that going on. And, um, and also, you know, I, I created a lot of counter, counterpoint elements in my composition so that, that they would uh, kind of overlap each other and, and create, a, you know, a, a texture. It was a fascinating, fascinating level. Back when Jack Wall was the uh, conductor for Video Games Live, so I had the idea that we should uh, we should remix one of Jack's songs. He thought that was really awesome, and uh, he kind of secretly confided at the time. He's like, "Well, hey, I'm about to start working on Mass Effect 2. Have you guys ever thought of remixing music from that?" And of course, you know, I was like, "Well, I'll, I'll sure give it a go now." You know, so so I did. I, I went home and like remixed uh, the Novaria theme uh, like the next day and emailed it to him. And then he called me, which, which astounded me. And he was like, man, this is really cool. And do you care if I send this to Bioware? Several months later, Jack basically called me back and, uh, and said, you know, hey, uh, I'd, I'd like you to, uh, to give a shot at writing some of the level music. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit exciting, and a little bit scary at the time, just because I'd never worked on anything with the scope of Mass Effect before. The thing about Grunt that was weird is that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was kind of like the only character where you went through his entire level and you, you didn't even meet him. So you had to you had to bring him aboard the Normandy and then and then uh, I guess let him out of his cryo tube thing. Uh, so you went through the whole level not even really knowing Grunt. So I kind of came up with like a really simple theme, uh, and it was just uh, it was like four notes. It was like dun 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 dun.
the thing about Samara is that she's a, she's a Justicar, and she kind of struck me as basically like the space alien equivalent of kind of a, of a monk. Naturally, I guess when people think of monks, they tend to think of like India or, you know, somewhere in the Far East or the Middle East or something. So, uh, you know, naturally there were some uh, kind of Middle Eastern uh, instruments that were brought in there. And then I added, you know, some of the vocal snippets in there as well, which kind of, I don't know, I, I think that kind of helped make a, a more personal connection in the music. Legion obviously is, uh, he's Geth, and the Geth were closely tied in with Saren from Mass Effect 1. So there's definitely thematic, um, there's a thematic revisitation of that theme. Jack is kind of a hard-edged character, and so I wanted the music to reflect that. So I, I chose a more kind of industrial, gritty sound um, for the synth elements for her character compared to Legion, for example. So the drum beats are, are kind of glitchy sounding um, to reflect her kind of attitude towards other people. To me, writing for cinematics is almost harder than writing for the other stuff because what's there is locked into the picture. And you have these cinematics and people are going to notice the music because they're not actually interacting with the game that moment. So they're, they have more energy to concentrate on the things like the music. And so I kind of felt like when you get the Normandy 2, it should have that kind of an impact on the player, that the music should be very kind of emotional, uh, kind of like have kind of a rejoicing feel to it because you know you love the Normandy the Normandy is kind of like part of your crew so I obviously wanted to throw a nod to the original Mass Effect theme that that Jack and Sam wrote so if you listen uh, closely that's in there uh, throughout the uh, throughout that cinematic um, and it, it was pretty good, and then at the very end, I think Jack decided that it maybe needed a little bit more boost, so Jack added a little bit extra uh, horn uh, to it, and I think that really, really, truly pushed it over the top. Mass Effect 1, I would just deliver the music and then they'd put it in the game. So, but for Mass Effect 2, I was completely immersed in that whole thing. And I would get on the phone with the audio director and we would play through the level. And as we were playing through it, I would talk, I would say to him, hey, is, you know, is this a cinematic, meaning is this scripted? this area and then when is it gameplay again because that's always been my pet peeve for the last 16 years in video games is the transitions are horrendous you know you, you know the music just is suddenly not playing anymore you know and and today there's a lot, a lot of audio directors are super passionate about this but it's it's still like hard to do right because the game designer may not lock the level until the last minute i mean writing music is like this much of it at that point really it takes it takes a lot longer to get right in the game you know, I would say it's 50% of it. So yeah, there's a lot of playtesting involved in the implementation, and we didn't we didn't have time for that, but we did it anyway. mission 
to me is the best thing I've ever been a part of uh, in any video game because it came it came through exactly as I imagined it would. It feels good to watch it. It was like the, the, a huge grand finale of the game. And, and I was really happy about that. You don't get that every day. Join us Friday as we conclude our series with Mass Effect 3 and a more somber score as the fate of the galaxy weighs on Shepard's shoulders. In the meantime, head over to Side Mission all this week to read full interviews with each of the composers featured in our series.